everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his gorgeous music on his website at tedyoder.com. It is also available from iTunes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my sunroom. Come on in, sit down, relax. It's Saturday night when I'm filming, uh, Saturday evening, I should say. And I, it's the first, been the first day of a three-day weekend here in the United States. This is um, Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday in uh, in memory and in honor of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I have a three-day weekend and I'm all happy. <laughs> and uh, I, I spent my first day uh, really actually working on fiber projects. I've been knitting a sweater. I've actually been knitting this sweater for like two and a half years. <laughs> and I figured I, I really would like to finish it. It's called St. Bridget. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. St. Bridget. It's a cabled sweater. The pattern um, is by a woman named Alice Starmore. And it is somewhat intricate, lots of cables, which I enjoy. Uh, and I had put it down for quite some time. So I've been working on it and I watched some Netflix while I was knitting and I did some spinning and and uh, I did some plant cleanup, but not of the, vi of the violets. I worked on the other house plants in the sunroom. But anyway, I wanted to, um, wanted to tell you that I got a, there was a note from Amy Cash Allison on the website and she wanted me to be sure to let you guys know. I, I had said last week that she sells plants and leaves. She's not selling plants any longer. She doesn't have the space anymore, but she does still sell leaves. And really, I think leaves is one of the best ways to bring something new into your collection. Uh, because you don't have to deal with a really long isolation period as long as you you know wash the leaf in soap and water and then put it down you should be fine so um, in the spring you're going to want to check her website and see what she has that you might find interesting and also she left a, a, a link in the comments um, for another blog post that she had done since we were kind of talking about the descriptions in first class two when we were talking about lollipop kid last week she has a great breakdown on her blog of how the descriptions work with the name of the cultivar and then the hybridizer and then if if it is registered the registration uh, number is there and then the first sentence of the description describes the blossom and the second sentence usually then describes the foliage and then at the very end it will say if it's uh, what size plant it is uh, and uh, like a miniature semi-miniature standard or large standard so uh, so that she's got a great breakdown so I encourage you to take a look at that and that leads me right into tips and treasures yay thanks Amy because you know we there there have been questions and, and more questions about blooming true. What does that mean? I, you know, how do I know what a description is? Um, how do I know? I mean, this kind of looks like the description, but I'm not really sure. And so I thought we would talk a little bit more about that today in, in hopes that that might be of some help. And um, first of all, where do you find descriptions of plants? Well, there are two official places where you can find them and I've got them I've got one of them right here well of course first class two has the descriptions of everything but what I got too many books here guys oh they're falling off my table yikes this is an older copy of the African violet and I've got my finger over somebody's phone number I don't know whose phone number that is I suppose whosoever it is, they don't really want it on, on the podcast. So I tried to cover it up. But this is an older copy. Um, this is the 11th edition from January 2006 of the African Violet Master List, the AVML, formerly known as the Master Variety List, which is why I kept tripping over it last time. And as you can see, it is, it's a good sized book and it is full of descriptions 
of plants. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, gig it's a big fat book. It's at least an inch thick. And all of these are also in First Class 2, which is the, pro the computer program. And it's, all right, I gotta figure out a place to put this down, sorry. I should've done that better. So that's where you, where you can find descriptions. Now, what if you have a plant that is not in there? Maybe it's a newer variety, it's not yet in the AVML, and it's not yet in First Class 2. Um, it is acceptable if you have, um, and you can you know, prove it by printing it out, if you have a description from a commercial's website at, with, the, with the description of the plant, that is acceptable to be used um, to show that your plant is blooming true, for example, at show. In fact, I have a plant right now downstairs, you'll see it in uh, the look in the stands. It's called Ma's Old Fashioned, and I, I believe that it's an Olive Ma Robinson plant. Um, I'm going to email them because I, I don't find the description of it on their website and I don't find it in first class too and so I'm hoping that they they have it and that they'll email it to me and I will be able to hold on to that email should I ever need to show it to someone to to say hey I've got the description here I've got it from from uh, from Rob's Violet Barn so it's really beautiful. Wait, do you guys see it? There's there's lots of interesting things for you to see this time uh, at the look on the stands. So um, I'm going to I want to show you a couple of other things, but first I want to do two things really quickly. Um, one is that Julie sent a message on Facebook, and I had not read the entire magazine yet last week when. Um, when I was telling you guys about the different articles and things to read. <coughs> your pardon. I hope I'm not having an asthma issue here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, Julie mentioned that she read in the magazine that this edition of the magazine is the last edition where they will be printing the moon phase information. And I'm very sorry to hear that because I do use it from there. But I also have the book. And you guys, this is where the information came from that, that they were publishing in the African Violet magazine. This is the Llewellyn's, uh, 2000, well, this one's 2013 Moon Sign book. Uh, it's available at your local bookstore, I'm sure, and if you don't find it there, they can either order it for you or it's also available, obviously, on Amazon.com. And probably wherever you are in, uh, in the world, I think Amazon's everywhere, isn't it? You can probably get it from them as well. So if you are interested and want to have this information at hand, you can get pick up a copy of Llewellyn's uh, book and you'll have it. So I want to do that. Now, let's go on. The other thing I wanted to do is I got a I love that Joyce left a comment on the website and but she also emailed me because someone was concerned about their plant was it not blooming yet if, if it was if it was they weren't sure it was a double and they thought it was supposed to be uh, there are two schools of thought um, in terms of blossoms um, I my own experience has been that if a plant does not bloom true to its description the first time it blooms for me it has been my personal experience that it's not going to um, it's different for variegation. Sometimes on the initial leaves of a plant, uh, when it's young, you'll think, oh my gosh, it's not variegated. That will come in over time. But I have found that for blossoms, it does not. I know that for some other folks, they do find if they wait a second or third bloom cycle, that then eventually maybe the, maybe the plant will bloom true. But it's been my experience that that is not the case uh, but again, this is one of those things that for me it's this way, for someone else it works a little differently. Neither, one is not right and the other wrong. It, it just depends, again, I think a lot depends on culture, conditions, growing conditions, all of that stuff that we've talked about over the, over the last few months. So please feel free to wait one or two bloom cycles and if that works for you, that's great. Because uh, Joyce uh, sent me an email about this and said, I'm sorry, guys, I'm really sorry. <clears throat> I keep coughing. She said, I'm enjoying the comments on your podcast page. 
One person commented about struggling to understand the semi-double-double double part of a plant description. Um, the first part, remember we, I mentioned this briefly, that first sentence of a description is going to talk about the blossom. If it's a single blossom, if it's a semi-double blossom, if it's a double, a semi-double, double, or a double. So there's four kinds, single, semi-double, semi-double, double, or semi-double slash double, I should say, and then double. And uh, one of the things Joyce said, and, I, and this is really interesting, I didn't know this. She says, I just recently I read that using a high phosphorus fertilizer can make your violet flowers become more double. She said she thinks she read it in Jeff Smith's column in the magazine, but she, was, she wasn't sure. And she said, anyway, we never know what the hybridizer who registered the variety was fertilizing with when they wrote the description. Nor do we know, nor do we know that about a plant that is shown in a photo. So this is where you know, this was harks back to what we we're talking about of not using the photos to try to identify something that you have. She said, I would urge people not to get too hung up on how double a flower is, especially if they are thinking it isn't blooming true based on that characteristic. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And again, you know different fertilizers they work differently they affect different parts of the different you know higher in phosphorus obviously affects part of the blossom these things can it's all part of culture and and how what you're using and how your conditions may differ from mine or someone else's so i wanted i'm going to take these these pages out of my book here not my book i don't have a book <laughs> but this is the handbook. This is how it's a loose leaf, comes like a loose leaf binder, um, and it is the African Violet Society of America's handbook for growers. You see, the first word is not judges, the first word is growers, the second word is exhibitors, and the last word is judges. In the vernacular, we call this the judge's handbook because it's what we all have to learn and study when we are studying to become a judge. But I know I, this is, as I've mentioned before, this is in my top three. I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of this. You can get it from the ABSA website. I'll link to that in the show notes for you. It is well worth the money. You will not regret having this in your collection. It covers everything that you could want to know, really, about our, these plants that we love. And one of the things that it talks about are blossom types. And all the, I mean, this is just some of the blossom types, but this is a really good place to find that information. Because if you're confused about what a single is or a double or, you know, a, a semi-double. So for example, a, a double blossom is a blossom with at least two layers of petals. So this is what they're calling there. And you can see it has more, this one happens to have, in the drawing, has more than two layers. And then a, a semi-double is blossoms that possess more than the standard five, five lobes, such as those blossoms with a crest or a tuft at the center, but less than a full second row of petals. And the blossoms may appear single and just have this you can see there's like a little tuft in the drawing right there. And then a single blossom. Blossoms have five lobes with two upper lobes that are usually smaller than the three lower ones. It's right there. But right below it is also a single, but it's called a star. A star blossom. Star, star blossoms have five lobes, lobes of about equal size and distance from one another. The blossoms can be single, which is what it is here in the photograph, in the drawing, but they can also be semi-double or double. The double star has extra layers of petals but maintains the star form. So there are, there's a bell blossom, 
And then it also talks about uh, things like a chimera. What does that mean? That's a blossom with a stripe that radiates, stripes that radiates, they radiate from the center of the blossom across each lobe. It's like a pinwheel. Um, there are fantasy blossoms, edged blossoms, fringed blossoms, multicolor blossoms, and two-tone wasp. That's a wasp blossom right down at the bottom there. So this, this is on page 14 of your handbook if you happen to have one, and you can really start to get a good idea. The other place you can look to try to have more information about this is obviously in first class two. And this is a great way to use the photos in first class two. You can use the search function and search for single blossoms. You can search for semi-double blossoms and you can search for double blossoms. And, uh, and, the, and you can see some photographs of hopefully what will show you those different types of blossoms. You can search for, in a description, you can search for chimera. You can search for pretty much anything in, in first class too. And, and it will pull up cultivars that have that informa th those, those characteristics that you're searching on. And it's, it's very, very helpful in that way. Plus, I'll tell you what, like I think I told you last week, when I first got it, I mean, I poured over those photos. I loved, I mean, it's just like, it's like going to, to the store right there and you, in front of your computer and you s just see them. You guys have to remember that back in the day before first class, when, when people were ordering uh, plants, uh, they were using the written description. So hybridizers have a great ability to describe their plants really well in a short amount you know, of words. And so that you can visualize that and know in your head, wow, I think this sounds like something that I might like. I might like to grow this one. So, I mean, certainly it helps now that we can often see a photograph, um, particularly in first class too, but back in the day, people just used the description when they were looking for something. So now the other, the page, next page in the handbook is page 15. And that page is foliage types. So we had blossom types, and now we have foliage types. And again, these are just the more common foliage types. Um, this top one looks very interesting. It looks like a, a mitten with an extra thumb. And it's, it's a compound, wasp, bustle, or piggyback. All of those are descriptive of this type of leaf. They are compound with, with like one large lobe and then two smaller ones. Uh, the next one is a girl leaf that's scalloped. And I know this is, I'm trying to get it where you guys can see it. It's kind of hard to see. Um, below here is a holly leaf. The next one is called longifolia. This one is called plain or tailored. And these, these descriptive words for these types of foliage, this is, these are the things that are used in first class and in, and in these official descriptions of the plants so that they, they mean the same thing every time you see them. And that makes it easier to, to know and understand. Then the other thing, it's down at the bottom here, and there's only one little leaf here. But this is variegation, so that this comes under foliage types, and I'll read this to you. It says, variegated leaves, in addition to shades of green, can be marked with white, cream, light yellow, or rosy shades from light pink to a deep wine red. Now, there's variegated foliage. This defines all variegation other than crown variegation or mosaic variegation. Those two are, are, they have their own descriptor. So when you see something that says Tommy Lou variegation, that would be just variegated. Tommy Lou means uh, it, it, it's about the, the edge, kind of that white edge, that it, it's not often very variegated in the center of the leaf, it's more solid green, but the edge is, is variegated white. That's, that's what they call Tommy Lou variegation. But that is captured under the word variegated. 
but crown variegation, which is where the center of the plant is very, very pale, and then as the leaves mature and get older, they green up a little bit more. So it's variegated very much in the crown of the plant. Mosaic variegation is a very distinct type of variegation that, uh, that is on a leaf, and I will, I will see if I can find some photos online of both of these and try to link to them in the show notes for those of you who might not have first class to, um, so that you can see them. Well, I think that that covers tips and treasures today. Um, again, this is a tremendous book. The handbook is such a great reference, I mean, for everything. Blossom types, foliage types, growing, pests, shows, judging, everything you could want to know is in the judges in the judges handbook. So there oh, made a big noise closing my, my notebook again. It is it is well, well worth this and it's very really quite reasonable. And I believe, I have to check, but I think if you're a member of the AVSA, I think it, you get a little price break, so another good reason to join the AVSA. Well, you guys, it's time to take a look at what's on the stands, and there are some interesting things blooming. So let's go take a look. Here we are in the guest room, taking a look at everybody. Everybody's kind of settling in pretty well after having been repotted. Um, Everyone just had a drink a little earlier. So here's, actually these guys really look pretty good. They are liking it up here. And I'm thinking I should have a few show hopefuls out of that shelf. And this shelf too. This roulette needs a turn. It always wants to grow toward the light. Oh, and here is Western Moon trying to bloom. I don't know, can you guys probably can't see it. But there's a blossom in there, and I'm gonna get my tweezers and pull it out. Hang on and I'll show you. Okay. There it is. Pretty good sized blossom too. I'll just dump it in there. Oh, here's another one. See, this is why you gotta check these things trying to grow for show, we do not want anybody blooming. And since they often go in threes, yep. There we go. All right, so you got a little lesson today on disbudding, because plants want to bloom. And we don't want them to bloom until it's time for show. Let's go down to the basement. Here we are in the basement. Now, this is a beautiful plant. This came from the Box of Joy. It's called Ma's Old Fashioned, but I cannot find an actual description for it. So if anyone's got one and can point me in the direction of where I can find it, that would be great because it looks to be a really heavy bloomer and the blossom itself is lovely. Plus, I like the foliage on it. Wonder what it is, officially. Let's go take a look over here. Here we go, everybody over here looking pretty good. And under the dome, everything looking great. Let's go look at the baby stand. Here are the Smithiantha cinnabarina plants. And here's my Apicia pink acajou. Looking okay. Let's go up to the sunroom. Well, here we are up in the sunroom. You can see it's a pretty gray day here. But everybody is doing okay. Growing, looking good. Here's the Gisneriad shelf, and you'll see here is Columnia Firebird just getting ready to bloom. And here is Columnia Apollo. And it is blooming. I've not had a yellow one before. It's very nice. Here is my Petrocosmia carii. It needed a drink, so it's looking a little 
got a couple of leaves hanging down there. The Ascananthus. And let's go over here. Everybody was thirsty this morning, so they're just looking a little sad, but they've all just had a drink. This is Texas Hot Chili. And this is Moonlit Velvet. And I thought that was a seed pod, but obviously, I mean, it would have if it was, well, you know. <laughs> It's not, I have to cut that off. And this plant still continues to just, oops, fall over. The blossoms are just so large, they fall over. That's very interesting to me. Anyway, let's go take a look at the big box violet. Well, here we are. And as you can see, oh, I was working on the spider plant that's hanging above here, so that's kind of got stuff on it. Here it is, came right into bloom. Let's see if I can shift it over a little there we go now i think that this is important that you see that um a plant that you just let bloom is going to bloom you know like this a couple of blossoms here and there this is not how you want a plant to bloom for show we try to get that big head of blossom uh to to come, you know, to be like right there in the center or in a halo shape. So when you let them bloom on their own, this is what they do. They just kind of bloom when they feel like it, here and there, a bloom stalk or two. So i um, got a leaf here that, you know, I've just left and nothing, uh, it's just hanging out, just hanging in there. Feels good. All right, that's the look at what's on the stands this week. Isn't that moss old-fashioned gorgeous? And I don't know if you noted, but noticed, but it has that Tommy Lou type of irrigation where it's around the outside of the leaf. And it's kind of cool to see the columnia starting to bloom. I have not grown columnia Apollo before, so I loved seeing that yellow blossom. And a firebird also has a red one coming. Uh, and I, I really enjoy growing columnias. They are, I think, of all the other gisnariates, I think they're my favorite to grow. They're really a lot of fun, and, and I love how they look. You can see my my original, um, I think it was my, I think it's Aladdin, um, that is in the opening photos uh, for the podcast. It was really big and gorgeous, and these two have the, uh, at least Firebird does, has the potential to get almost that big. I'm not sure yet because Apollo looks to be a little more compact in its growing habits, so we'll see how it does. And the big box violet is blooming. I can't get over it. But I mentioned this as you, as you were seeing the plant. It's very clear, I, I think it's very clear that you can see that when you just allow a plant to grow and do its own thing, it's going to bloom when it wants to bloom. And it's not going to have that big like ice cream cone head of blossom that you see, you know, for show. And I'm letting it bloom however it wants to bloom. So it's got, you know, it's got two blossom stalks right now and one one blossom open for sure. And uh, we'll just let it go and, and see how it does. I'm, I'm just thinking that it, it's going to be very soon that we may need to repot it because it's potted in that miracle Grow potting mix. And that really only lasts, uh, they say the fertilizer in that uh, is good for six months. So it's going to be time. Uh, I'll have to go back and check when we potted that up, and so I'll know when we need to repot it. Well, it's time to get the bail money ready. And truthfully, what we have to get the bail money ready for this week is convention. It's coming in June. I know that seems a really long time away, but it will be here sooner than you think. So I really encourage you to go out onto the AVSA website if you are considering going to National in Austin this year. Uh, now's the time. Get that stuff. Print, print the info out. Look it over. See what you might want to look, what, what programs you might want to register for. And... Uh, I think we'll talk about it in a little more depth next week. I'll, I'll print it out uh, myself again and, uh, and kind of talk you through what some of those things are. You might not know what they are and, uh, and the things that you might want to for sure mark on your calendar in terms of that. Well, and it's also, we're on the, I'm on the pre-show schedule for the Illinois show. And this last week was week 12. And uh, this week is week 11. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing in the schedule for week 11. 
got my new book out this time, so you would know that I actually have the new one. Um, things happen again on week 10, but you did see me disbud uh, Western Moon because it was trying to bloom. And I'm not going to, uh, unlike the big box violet, I'm, I'm gesturing to it because it's over there, um, here in the sunroom, I do not want any of my show hopefuls to be trying to bloom at this point. I want all their energy to go into their leaves to build a good, strong basis for a beautiful head of blossom. So I will be continuing to disbud for the next you know, few weeks or so until, until the schedule tells me, okay, that's enough, stop. <laughs> well, it's time to keep moving forward. I wanna thank you all for joining me this week. I hope that wherever you are, you are have, you've had a wonderful week. I'll tell you, we still haven't had any, I should knock on wood, I will, knocking on wood. We haven't had any real snow here in Chicagoland. We are breaking record after record after record. In fact, we've gone almost 365 days without a measurable snowfall, which is, I don't ever remember that in my whole life thus far. So, I mean, I have to say I'm not complaining because it certainly makes my daily commute much easier. I, I walk to the train every day from my home as you know, because you hear the train go by every once in a while on the podcast. But I just walk down the street to catch the train into the city, and it's much easier when there's no snow on the ground. But it is very strange that we haven't had any. But I don't know. I mean, we had a warmer day today. It was in the 40s, again, for mid-January, kind of bizarre. But the temperature is dropping tomorrow down into the 20s, and by Monday, it's supposed to be very, very chilly here in Chicagoland. So, but thank you for joining me this week. I hope that you will come back next week, tell your friends, and uh, I hope that your days are filled with all the things you love. Good growing. I'll see you next time.